How are you? I'm doing wonderfully. And yourself? Oh, I'm absolutely wonderful. You look wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> D'Angelo, welcome to the Streamies virtual red carpet. How are you feeling today? I'm doing wonderfully. I'm just glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Streamies, for putting this all together. Very exciting. Of course. Well, you deserve it. I mean, you're nominated for commentary and look at you. You look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I had to get all dressed up for the occasion. It's not every <laughs> year you get nominated for a Streamie. <laughs> Yes, you are trying to, you know, give me a run for my money. Now, I want to <laughs> You know we have to bring it. Ah, thank you, thank you. Now, I want to ask you about your growth because Ooh. it has been amazing. I mean, you went from around 500,000 to a million, right, in just a month? Yes, sir. In fact, it was kind of scary, I think is the biggest adjective I'd use to describe that one. Very oh. unexpected, just because... You know, I've had videos do well in the past. I had an idea of like what doing well meant, but that month it was just completely shattered. But of course I'm grateful because legitimately my whole career just, you know, started skyrocketing. Right, and I think that's amazing. You know, I, I think we have found, I mean, even me myself, is that recently, you know, it's amazing how something can just be uploaded and then it just takes you into a new stratosphere of success, you know? Right, I'm just grateful to, have seen that. I guess I didn't even know what was possible. <laughs> that is wonderful. Well, look at you now. You're nominated for a streaming. For someone, because commentary is such an interesting nomination. I think a lot of times when people hear that, they're like, well, what does that exactly mean? So for somebody that doesn't know, how would you explain what your channel is? I make videos about anything that interests me. I think commentary is my favorite genre because if you have a point to make, then that's it. You have your whole video. All you have to do is, you know, write it out, kind of make it interesting to the public and you're good. So for example, I have a video on my channel about dog cloning, the phenomena of that. I have videos on my channel about like labor laws or just even more serious topics that you wouldn't necessarily think would fit in a YouTube video. So I really think commentary is like less of a genre limitation and more of just the freedom to talk about whatever you want on YouTube. Great. Now, was this something that you were always interested in? Like, did you do speech and debate growing up or anything like that? Um, more so, I've always been very essay focused. I've always written a lot. I've always supported a lot of my arguments with facts and evidence, which is what I try to do on my channel as well. So I do think my background in just being obsessed with research and analytics and all of this stuff and presenting it, you know, logically and interestingly definitely helps me in my YouTube channel. Great. Now, where are you from? I am from Texas, born Texas, raised Texas. Might not even move out of Texas. I'm just a Texas boy through and through. <laughs> okay, I love that. That is wonderful. Now, you're known for being very honest and authentic. So am I. What is that like? Do you find that people find that to be jarring or do people not understand it sometimes? Like, how did you become so comfortable within your own voice? I've just had a lot of experience, honestly, speaking out for myself. I think... At any given time, whether it was when I was in school or when I was like a little kid or going through my university program, I've certainly had times where whether or not I got to where I was supposed to be depended solely on whether or not I could speak up. So a lot of the things on YouTube that, you know, I'll call out or I'll speak up if I see something I don't like, it's just because honestly, I know that if I don't, who will necessarily? And so I think when I do maybe say something that might throw some people off, but then I get a lot of comments like, I've been trying to talk about this. This is an issue that's important to me as well. I'm so glad you said it because now I can just send people these videos because I might not have known how to word it in the same way. I think it's like really important. Right, that's so important. Now, have you ever been to the Screamy Awards? I have not. In fact, I'm so salty that the very first year I get nominated, it's like there's no in-person award ceremony this time, but I will definitely be coming back next time. Just to oh, see everybody. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Streamy Awards are is nothing but fun, and it is heartbreaking that we aren't able to be in person this year. I know I'm definitely missing it, but we can't wait to have you come to be there live in person. Now, if you would have went to the Streamy Awards and if we would have done it like normal, is there anybody that you would have wanted to meet or hopefully run into? Absolutely. I just want to see everyone else in my um, genre, the commentary genre that I got nominated under. We all did so well. Of course, I've put a lot of work into my channel this year, but all the other nominees, Jarvis Johnson recently, he's like really stepped it up in terms of both his podcast and his content. Danny Gonzalez, 
it's almost scary like how consistently high quality his productions have been this entire time. I'm really glad to see him recognized for that as usual. Um, Tiffany Ferg and her analysis. I'm actually, it just like makes my heart happy that something as niche as what Tiffany Ferg does could resonate with enough people to land this award nomination. And then of course, ContraPoints, uh, basically a pioneer <laughs> in her respective field of like um, essay commentary, political commentary on YouTube. She's really set the tone for a lot of this stuff. So. I'm just like grateful to the stream news team this year for really looking at the space and picking just a representative of everything that's kind of going on. So yeah, I would have loved to have run into these people, gotten our group photo for Instagram, but we will do that next time. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I love that you talked about, you know, people having time to spend on their channels, specifically yourself during this pandemic. So is there anything that you have learned that you want to do next or anything you want to expand on once we're all back to somewhat of normal? Yes, absolutely. I want to create content that involves going out because I guess I didn't necessarily recognize the value of going out until it was recommended that I stay home, which of course <laughs> everyone should do. It's why we're home right now. Uh, so I am privileged and I think everyone on the streamies list is privileged in that we can stay home and still be okay. But it really showed me, I can't just do this all the time, you know, just because I can, I've got to go out once this is over, I've got to interact with people. I've got to, you know, host my own things basically and talk to people. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I've just, I've been coming up with all these video ideas and like, they're so good, but they involve traveling <laughs> or like, they're so good, but they involve an in-person clap. And I've just been writing them down because they'll still be there everyone will still be good, you know, once this is much more under control. So I'm, ex I'm hopeful for the future and I'm grateful that I'm not as severely affected as others might be. Hey Amen. That's wonderful. And it's great to be able to figure out how to be resilient. I love that you've written down those ideas and just kind of like save them for later when you're able to do them and didn't just like throw them away. I think that's very important. Yes, now, sir. if there was anybody that wanted to start doing commentary themselves, what is your process like before you do a video? Is there, especially with, you know, the research of it all, is there, do you write an essay first and then you do your commentary? Do you do bullet notes? Like, what is your process? Um, I genuinely start with uh, caring about it. I think that's like the first step that I don't see everyone do. You have to really care about this. You have to be able to walk up to somebody in the elevator and basically pitch your idea as a movie almost. You're like, I care about this niche topic this much because if you can make something that you find interesting, interesting to another person, then you're good. You've got your concept. So once that's done, yes, I do go like, you know, intro, conclusion, thesis, honestly, what's the main point of my video? And then you just hit your um, main points and your body. And then from there, because that's a very clinical way of developing it, I just put as much personality and humor on top of that as I can. Because as much as I love like the boring, process of research. I can't sit through a boring video, so I am going to be bringing the sarcasm, <laughs> the, the memes, just all of it. And um, that's my process for creating videos. I just, it makes it something that I enjoy doing. Like when I sit down to draft a new video, I know it's something I can get excited about because I know people are going to get excited about it once it's up. Great. And that is so important. You know, I think it's just like when people are watching our content, it's like if we aren't happy with the content that we are making, how we are, how are we going to expect other people that are consuming it to be happy with it as well? Yep. So I love that you stick true to who you are and you stay true to that. Congratulations on your nomination. I wish you the best of luck and a wonderful, happy holiday season. Thank you so much, Kellen. You too. Of course. Have a wonderful night. All right. You too.